Did I have a specific routine to follow when I started DJing? Don't clang and don't do vocals over vocals. <laughs> So the equipment that I learned to DJ on was actually Nexus 900 mixer and the CDD 2000s. I started DJing in 2012, but I was playing more like indie rock numbers. So I was like Radical Club Night with my friends and we thought we were like the new punk superstars. And then in 2015, I started hosting the Drive Time Show Ministry of Sound Radio. And I couldn't be the host of that if I didn't know how to properly DJ. And they had the 2000 CDJs and the 900 in the studio. So that's where I properly learned. My setup hasn't changed that much. The introduction of the CDJ 3000 is amazing because I love the beat jump, um, especially if you haven't like put your hot cues in record box. Record box is an interesting one because obviously it constantly updates, but I am too scared to update it because I hear horror stories. So I'm still in, like three years behind on my updates and beat uh, on record box. So for me personally, not much. The introduction of the beat time is amazing, and the new A9 uh, mixer is pretty sick. Did I have a specific routine to follow when I started DJing? Don't clang and don't do vocals over vocals. Um, I think my main thing was that I was too scared to play two tracks under each other, like, like completely mixed. And it took me a while to build the confidence to actually be able to blend between three decks. And now I play between three and four decks. So I suppose it's a confidence of like building elements as I go and DJ through the years. My first, first ever DJ gig was when I was playing Indian. I was actually like fading in and fading out, but I wouldn't count that. I think my first like proper like professional DJ gig was at a festival called Love Box. And it was a tiny little box that was in a sponsorship like tent. And I just played loads of stuff that I played in the radio and it quickly made me realize that I've got to have a lot more club records when I play a festival because you can't just play festival bangers for two hours because people get knackered. The first time I performed at High Ibiza, I think I probably vomited about five times. The feeling of this and this, whilst you're trying to be in control of everything, um, was quite overwhelming because when we do feature rave, the minute those doors open, it's like the whole place is packed within 10 minutes. And so seeing people run to the front and then just staring at you and you've been assigned the challenge of making them dance, it's terrifying. So my first time was absolutely terrifying and I'll never do it again. Um, and now I'm using the reverb towards the end, of just before you get down to, uh, to a breakdown. I often, I cue a lot of my tracks so I don't have a lot of breakdowns because I like to keep it rolling and chubby. And um, I suppose an element I do is I get a lot of classic acapellas when I'm playing with maybe a more underground club record and I can bang in something that's quite recognisable and a look that gets everyone up and excited because they recognise it as well as like um, enjoying the world underground element. My organisation where USB is shocking. I pretty much make a playlist for every single gig that I do. Some of them range for Hi, I beat the Future Rave 2023. Future Rave May. We didn't do Future Rave in May, but I still have one. Um, I have one that just says fun. Uh, there's classics. Um, I give them all weird names, but mostly it's the gigs that I'm doing. So I supported Fisher and Cardiff recently, so I have Fisher Wheels. It's one of my playlists. So I just make it as literal as possible. Most of my sticks have about 1,400 average on them. I don't like doing too many, but I always like to have things to hand if I'm like rolling through and I scroll upon something that I haven't played in a while. Um, play, any tips for not losing my headphones or USBs? Play here at high, because the guys in the cafeter over there will always run after you when you like leg it up the decks. Uh, the amount of times the guys here have like, literally been like, hello. The, my favorite back to back I ever did was with Eat Everything in Croatia. We played four and a half hours. We didn't have a single thing planned. It was off the cuff and we played from sunset until like the sun nearly rose again and it was perfection. The most challenging back to back was here at High. I featured rave last year uh, when myself and Aegis Elba and MK and Ways went back to back and it was MK's birthday and they had consumed a lot of tequila whilst I was opening up the main room in here. So by the time I got to the club room, there's a lot of crisis management, shall we say, on the deck. I would like to hear my brand new track that I literally finished yesterday on Logic. It's called Jumping, and it's the closest track I've ever made to Yamanda Simpson Strings. And I would love to hear what that sounds like in this club. Love.